Hello and welcome to this tutorial on camera mapping in After Effects. What we're going to demonstrate is how to get parallax. Now parallax is when something in 3D space moves differently in relation to something else. So the foreground elements might move faster or slower than the background elements. It's like sitting in a train and as you're looking at the horizon, the horizon's moving very slowly whereas the trees in front of you are whipping past. That's parallax, the difference between the two. Now I've got an image that I downloaded from Flickr. I checked it out under the Creative Commons license and Flickr is a wonderful resource for material. Lots of people put things up and they use this Creative Commons license and as long as you check the boxes when you search you can actually use them for commercial purposes and build upon them free of charge. Now this item was uploaded by Wiltron and I'm very grateful to him and what we actually have is a runway. And I want to demonstrate how to do this camera mapping process with this image from Wiltron which I've already got in After Effects. Here is the image and I've already got a composition, it's just a PAL widescreen. So take the item, drag it and drop it into my composition, and there it is. Now if I create a camera, so I go layer, new camera, and I'm gonna go with a standard 50 millimeter, click OK, and I choose the unified camera tool here, or I could just tap the letter C, and then I make sure that this layer is actually 3D, so that it can go backwards and forwards in 3D space, and then I use my camera tool and go backwards and forwards, it kind of, there's a sort of a parallax there, but when you go sideways, very clearly just a flat image. And you've got no sense of, of difference of movement, foreground, background, it's just obviously a flat image. What we want to do, I'm going to reset my camera. What we want to do is we want to create three screens. A screen for the sky, a screen for the runway, and a screen for the horizon. And then we want to create a projector which has got a camera and a light bulb. And then we want to use this image, not as a picture as it is now, but like a film strip. Something that you can shine light through and project an image from. And we're going to project the image of this runway from the projector onto the screens that we create. And that's what camera mapping is all about. Now there's a couple of steps in After Effects you need to know to make it work properly, but once you know that, you can use it for anything. You can use it for moving images. This happens to be just a still image for demonstration, but it'll work just as well with moving images as long as you set things up properly. Okay, I'm gonna turn this 3D switch off at the moment because um, it's gonna be slightly easier to set up our screens if the item isn't 3D. We've got our camera, and we'll come back to creating the projector a bit later on. So the first thing I need to do is create my screens. One for the sky, one for the runway, one for the horizon. So let's do those with solid layers. So I'm gonna go layer, new, solid. I'm gonna make sure that this layer is pure white because I do not want to colorize the end results in any way, shape or form. I want it pure white, I want it to be a pure representation of what's happening. Screens need to be white, so click OK. And I'm gonna call this layer sky. Make sure it's the composition size and click OK. And there is my sky layer. Now I need to make it 3D, so I click the little 3D checkbox here. And I need to be able to see through it so that I can actually line it up with the image. So to be able to see through it but also be able to see it so I can line it up, I need to add an effect. And the effect I'm going to add is grid, G-R-I-D. And then don't choose an animation preset. Do go down to the bottom, you've got grids, it's under generate, generate grid, click, drag and drop it on the layer and there we have a grid. It's a white grid, you can see that by the colour here which you can change if you want to. Now what we want to do is kind of rotate it so the top bits towards us and the bottom bits away from us so that we can line it up with the sky here and sort of come towards us. So let's select the layer and hit P for position, hold the shift key hit R for rotation and we're going to need scale as well so while you've got the shift key down hit S for scale so let's rotate it so we want to rotate it along this X axis in the middle so we're going to choose rotation X axis and start to rotate it so that it comes towards us and you know what 40 40 degrees there you go so the tops towards us the bottoms away from us but it's clearly in the wrong place because it's over the runway and the horizon 
we want to shift it right up so we're going to move it up in the y axis the up and down axis which is the second one in here position grab it and move it up till it's in about the right place which is about sort of there probably want the whole of this building to be honest in your horizon now the only other thing is it's clearly not wide enough I can click and drag and just drag it wider or you can just scale it if you want as well you can see I've scaled it that way okay so that's going to cover our sky now we want one for the runway so we can select the layer and we can duplicate it so control or command D we want to rename that at once so hit return on your keyboard and name it runway hit return again and then we can open that up open up the transforms for that and what we want to do is probably rotate it in the opposite direction to be honest so we've gone plus 40 so let's take that to minus well it's probably going to need to go a bit further because it's a different angle so minus minus 58 start off with that anyway and then pull it down and take it so it's lying on the runway now what you can see is that the angle is not steep enough that doesn't look like the runway and we kind of want to reflect the runway a bit more so I'm going to play around with that angle a bit more and see if I can get it more to sort of lie flat on the runway which is probably something like that to be honest Maybe even more something like that yeah that's better out there so that kind of looks like it's lying flat on the runway and I'm going to need to scale that so I'm going to unchain my scale I'm going to scale it in the Y dimension so that it fills up the right area and I also need to scale it wide as well slightly there we go so that's kind of lying on the runway you might even want to rotate it more than that to get sort of a, a more there you go that's even better but again I need to, to scale it more in the Y just to take it to the right width I need to go bear in mind you've got areas like this where you need to make sure that you go right to the edge it doesn't matter how big this is as long as it does what you want it to do size is not a problem just make sure it's scaled so it's off the screen there we go so we've got our top we've got a sky with a runway and now we need to create one for the horizon this bit in the middle so we can choose the layer again and we can just duplicate it so command D on a map control D on a PC name it at once horizon hit return and then we can open up the transforms for that in fact the first thing I'm going to do is just reset the transform so that's just sitting slap bang in the middle and rather than actually fooling around with the transforms the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to rotate the whole view so I can see it from the side so I can work out where this should go so I'm going to choose my unified camera tool my left mouse button and move the whole thing sideways and now I can see roughly where it should go and I can if I want use my selection tool and actually physically grab this and pull it back and let's just reset the camera now how does that look are we going to be cutting it about the right place I'm going to just turn off the effect on that last one so if you just hit the FX button here and do a rotation with the camera tool so C for the camera tool and go around we might need to move that back a bit further it's certainly not wide enough so hit V to get my selection tool and just take it wide turn that effect back on C for camera tool you might need to fiddle around with this a bit later on you might find that actually the horizon's not not in the right place but we'll see that a bit later on and we'll be able to move that without any problem so reset my camera turn off the effects so all these grids can be turned off if you want to do a, a, a move around again you can do a move around and see if that looks about right but we'll have a look closer as we move on with the project okay so what we've done now is we have made our screens and we've got our item here our runway but we can't see the runway so let's just make the runway 3D there's our runway and you can see it's actually intersecting with one of the screens there but that's fine that's now 3D and we're kind of ready to do the next job which is setting up our projector now we've got a camera and we need to create a light so we go layer new light because a projector consists of an item that is shining light but we want to actually look through our projector so we need to have a camera with a light attached and actually we need to have them in exactly the same place 
I'm going to rename the light from light one to projector light because I might have more lights in my scene and I want to be careful with them. I want the light to be pure white again because I don't want to colorize it and most important of all I want it to cast shadows because the way After Effects works casting shadows is essential. So I'm going to click OK and there's a light and it all looks kind of kind of wrong. So what we need to do is we need to now set up our projector. And that means we need to have this light here at the same position as the camera. So select the camera and hit P for position. And then select position and copy it. So it's control or command C to copy. And then go to the projector light and then do control V for a PC, command V for a Mac and we have pasted the position of the camera to the light so that they are at exactly the same place. So let me just show you. I'm going to go to the top view here. Top view. I'm going to zoom out a bit. And you can see that I've got a camera and light set up here. So that's the light you're looking at here. And there's the camera underneath. So they're both at exactly the same place. The next thing we need to do is take our runway picture and move its position just in front of the light. So select it and then we can, we've can. we already got the position copied from the camera so we can again do a command or control V to paste it and now I'm going to zoom into this now we have the camera and the light and the picture all at exactly the same place so if I just go on the light you'll see there's the light projecting from this point this is just showing you a cone this is not the light's projection, the light's projection is from this point and we've got the camera which is projecting again from this point and we've got the picture at this point. This picture we need to turn it into a film rather than a picture we need to be able to see through it and we need to move it because at the moment it's at a position where it cannot be seen through so what we need to do is select the layer that we're going to turn into our film hit P for position and then just move it slightly in front of the camera about there should be absolutely fine at the end of this sort of cone angle here but clearly you're not going to see this part of the screen and this part of the screen so the next thing we need to do is scale this image down so that all of this picture fits in sort of to this cone so select the image hit S for scale and start to scale it down and from experience you're looking at three possibly four percent three looks about right to me three percent as you can see there's the camera and here's our image and our image all of it is in front of the camera so this is our projector the camera the light and the actual picture but we haven't actually yet made it film it is still a picture I'm going to go back to the active camera and I'm going to select fit that is not projected that is just the image really really small at the moment it is not projected because if I select my camera and I do a move around you'll see well kind of, what on earth it's gone it's not working there's no projection taking place so I'm going to reset my camera what we need to do now is turn this from a picture which you cannot see through to a film strip that light can project through so to do that you need to select the layer and you need to get to its material properties. Now it's a 3D layer so it does have material properties which you'll find when you scroll down. You've got transforms and then underneath you have material options. The keyboard shortcut to get to material options quickly with the layer selected hit AA, AA and then you'll see that you've actually got material options underneath. And there's not many changes we need to make but there are two. Firstly the way that this is going to work is by casting a shadow. It is the shadow of this layer that's going to be projected onto the screens because that's the way After Effects works. Bear in mind it's digital light, it's not real light. But we don't want the original item casting a shadow, we just want to see the shadow. And you'll see under this material options there is something to say cast shadow. You click once and you get yes it's going to cast a shadow. And at the moment that would just be a big black blur. But what we want to do is just have shadows, we don't want to see the original image anymore. So if you click it again you'll see that it says shadows only and at the moment all you're seeing is the black because the item is still fully opaque, no light is going through it. However notice the option below that says light transmission. 
at the moment nothing is going through the image but if we start to pull it up pull it up pull it up to 100 percent light is transmitting through the image onto the screens and you can clearly see that our screens aren't set up right we actually need to move this bottom screen up so this is what i was worried about earlier so let's choose the runway screen hit p for position and we can physically start to shift it up so that we've got about the right place and there we go so we've got a horizon in the middle and you see the horizon isn't quite right either so this is where you can sort of fine tune it i'm going to move the sky and hit p for position and i'm also going to move that up slightly there we go so we've got our horizon in the middle we've got a runway here we've got a sky here but hey look you know that looks nothing like it's supposed to look does it that that looks kind of weird and that's because what we haven't done is we haven't set up the screens and the way that the screens receive light is very important so at this point what we can do is we can select all these three screen layers so we've got horizon runway and sky select them choose the top one hold the shift key get the bottom one a a if you remember to get to those material options and all three layers are selected so whatever change i make on the top layer because all three layers are selected will be moved onto all three layers and the issue we have is accepting lights at the moment we've got a light our projector light which is shining a light and causing problems all we want to see is the projection we don't want to see the light affecting it as well so if you turn off accept lights suddenly it looks a lot better and we've actually created exactly what we're trying to aim to do we've created camera mapping the quality is rubbish don't worry about that I'll show you how to deal with that in a moment but the first thing I want to show you is that we have actually done what we aim to do so I'm gonna hit C to get my unified camera tool if you get the wrong tool just keep hitting C until you get this icon here and then if I start to move it around a bit you can clearly see that the runway is a lot closer than the other bits and pieces and if I hit my right mouse button I can kind of zoom in and we've got a real look a real parallax look okay so let's do an animation let's hit the stopwatch for position and go forward two seconds and then using my right mouse button I'm just gonna move in and using my left mouse button I'm gonna do a rotation and just about get those buildings at the side and then you'll see that we've got a definite sort of parallax movement and if you add a 3D item, any 3D item into this scene so that it sits on the runway and you start to do this sort of rotation, you'll actually see the parallax even more clearly. So you could add an aircraft on there or people walking or whatever you wanted, a green screen item to get that kind of look that's really quite powerful. Now, I said I'd quickly explain about quality. At the moment, this shadow, which is what this effectively is, looks pretty poor and you really wouldn't want to use this in a production. This is brilliant for setting stuff up, but this isn't brilliant for the end result. For the end result, what you need to do is change the composition settings. I'll show you how to do that. You go Composition, Composition Settings, and then you go to the Advanced tab here. On the Advanced tab, you choose Options, and then you have the size of the shadow map. Now, bearing in mind that shadows are maps, they are bitmap representations of a shadow and those can be low quality or high quality at the moment we're just saying we'll use the comp size but what you can do is you can make it smaller which will give you a really poor quality shadow but it would render really quickly or you can make it really high quality and it would render a lot slower and that's the issue is rendering but I'm going to choose 4000 click OK and watch the quality bang did you see the difference it went from being an average look to being quite a high quality look now bear in mind this isn't a particularly high quality image in the first place but if I just hit my spacebar you'll see how slow each frame renders it's pretty slow so that's why you don't use a high quality shadow map when you're actually producing it you use the high quality shadow map and you select that when you're ready to output it in the end otherwise than that you would go back to I'll do it again composition composition settings advanced options and choose a shadow map and generally speaking just choose comp size click OK and you'll see that again we've gone back to a blurry image but it's going to move if I hit my space bar you'll see it's going to render that a heck of a lot quicker one final thing if you're struggling with your composition to be able to see what different angles look like 
because every time you move it it wants to render the image and it can be ever so slow. Do bear in mind you do have this option to turn off live updates. Live updates mean that as I move my mouse around it gives me a live update and shows me what the changes are. If I turn off live updates you usually get a warning saying you're turning them off but I've actually already done that once today and then I start to move things around I get an outline movement and then it only updates when I'm finished I choose the outline move and you can go around as far as you like so that's just showing you if you've got a really heavy scene and you want to be able to sort of see things very quickly and uh, not fool around with everything taking ages to render you can just turn off live updates I don't need to this seems light enough but it does certainly save a bit of time. Well I hope you found this tutorial useful. This is a really good technique. It's actually very simple to do once you've done it a few times. Obviously the quality of the image in the first place makes a big difference as does making sure that your camera map is as high quality as possible so that the end results are going to be the best that they can be. Well my name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.